ES6 is short for ECMAScript 6. The ECMA body is the one that controls the standards for the language and they also bring out new versions of the language, just like HTML has new versions as well as CSS. Well, that's the same for JavaScript and you could also call it ECMAScript if you wanted to and it's ECMAScript version 6 or JavaScript version 6. And this new version allows you to define a new way to create a variable. The first way which is the way we've already seen is a standard variable. The new way is using let and also you have constants. In either case, you have symbol names. These symbol names are just like an address to your house. They allow you to address values stored in memory. You're probably going, well, why do we need let. Well, let has more respect for scope. And we're going to demonstrate this. But first of all, I just want to demonstrate that, in fact, these are all symbol names. You have the symbol name for the variable. You have let symbol for the scoped value, that string that we're storing. And also you have the constant, which is sim name. Symbol name is a variable container, which means its value can vary depending upon what you assign. You can assign a number or anything else. So you can reassign the value to this memory address. It's kind of like knocking down the house and then building a different house. Also with the let symbol, you can also assign new values. They are variables. And now my let symbol will reference the new value placed in its memory address. Then you also have constants such as sim name that once set, you cannot assign a new value. And you'll notice that we get an error if we try to do such. But why would I want to use let? What's the whole reason behind it? Well, let creates symbols that respect the scope that they reside in, particularly with conditional execution context. So let's cut this out. And then what I want to do is take a look at an if statement. An if statement takes a condition and upon that condition being true, it will execute whatever is in its execution context. So we are in essence defining an execution context that's conditional and we want to see if it creates these symbol names where we expect it to be. So I'm going to save this now and hit refresh. First of all, what about this variable here, symbol name? Well, when I take a look at that, it actually allows me to pull out that value from memory. But that shouldn't have happened because this is the scope here. That is the scope. That's not the window object. And what it did was it went out of that scope and it actually attached that symbol name to the window object. And that's very bad because we're adding a global variable here. And you could have all sorts of problems here. Naming collisions. I could have another if statement down my script using the same symbol name, thinking that the variables respect the scope. But variables don't respect conditional execution context, such as if statement execution context. So that didn't work. Now, what about the let symbol? Well, we created that symbol name, let symbol, and you'll notice it says, sorry, it's not defined. So the let symbol was defined within these braces and they are scoped. It respected the block level scope. You also have a constant. You can also think of this as a block, a block of commands that we're placing together and we're asking to execute it and it respects that block. What about the constant as well? Constants also respect the scope of this conditional execution context and that's why you should use let if you want to respect the scope. And also, don't forget, you also have other types of execution contexts, such as, for example, a for loop. So you also have these parentheses here and we're creating a variable called i and also let's paste in those instructions again so we have the variable and we also have let and we have constant let's see if variable respects this conditional execution context and also this variable here respects the parentheses let's go ahead and hit refresh let's see if i has been defined i has been defined and i is equal to five so it created this variable, this symbol name on the window object. It jumped out of this scope, these parentheses here, which has caused a huge problem because now my window object has a symbol name called I unnecessarily. I don't need that symbol to be globally accessible. Also, we have 
this symbol name here from the variable symbol name. That also did not respect the scope. So vars don't seem to be respecting conditional execution context scope. However, let symbol, for example, that did. Let symbol, sorry, that's not defined. It was defined within this scope private to this execution context. Also the constant, which is sim name. Sim name also respected the private execution context of this for loop. So it's private, but var didn't. And that's why you should use let. And also let will solve that problem here. Now I'm using let for the symbol name I. Now if I try to access I, it's gonna say, sorry, that's not defined. So it respects the parentheses and it also respects the braces. Now I want to further stress that you have your functions right here. Now with functions, the var is respected. So if I create a variable with a symbol name var symbol, and then I assign a value, and then I hit refresh, you will notice that var symbol is not defined. And if I run those instructions, so I'm invoking that execution context, and then I try it again, you'll also get the same error. So variables respect only the scope of a function's execution context, but it does not respect anything to do with for loops or if statements. When it comes to that, you should use let wherever possible because it respects the scope of those execution contexts or conditional execution contexts to be specific.